And um, so the, today's message is about having boldness with confidence and that this is the will of God for us. And I think often there's a misunderstanding about when the Bible talks about confidence and boldness. So we're going to look at that with a few scriptures. So, let's start with Ephesians 3.12, and we'll look at this scripture, and then we're going to talk about it, because God is transforming us so that none of us are wimps. We're not supposed to be wimps, and sometimes Christians are viewed as wimps because they think they're just nice people you can push around and take advantage of, and have any of you ever been taken advantage of? By somebody? Yeah. I think we all have, and especially when people uh, sense that you're a giver and you love God and you want to be a blessing, pe people can spot you and say, oh, there's, there's one of those Christian people. I can, I can use them, take advantage of them, and push them around, get what I want from them. And that may not sound very nice, but that's a reality we all have to deal with is that Christians, people who have a giving heart and want to be a blessing, are vulnerable to be taken advantage of. But this won't happen if we start to receive the boldness and confidence that God's given us to stand strong. And that window will fall apart if you push it open. So we're leaving that one down. <laughs> Some windows are not meant to be opened. So, it says here that we have boldness and confidence with access. I'm going to read it in order this time. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. By the faith of who? Jesus. Jesus, right? So, it's Jesus' faith that he has in us that is carrying us through this life so that we can win the battles. And Jesus has more faith in us than we do in ourselves. But that can change over time as you realize if the Lord believes in you, isn't that enough? I think it's enough. Many times people give up because certain people don't believe in them. Maybe you know somebody who let you down, doesn't believe in you. But don't ever say, nobody believes in me and nobody has faith in me. Don't ever say that because the Lord chose you and he has full faith in you and he believes in you and he knows that you can become all that you were meant to be. But it's through his faith, the Lord, when you know the Lord is on your side, and that the Lord believes in you, even if a bunch of other people don't, and even if a bunch of other people don't support you as a person, you will be able to sustain and go through against strong odds. And this is why it says in the Bible, if God is for us, who can be against us? We need to know in our heart, deep down in our heart and mind, that God is for us. So let's say that all together. God is for me. Let that sink down into your spirit because many times the reason people suffer defeat is because they start to believe the lies of the enemy that God doesn't really believe in you. But think about it. He's entrusted you with his spirit. He put his spirit in you. And he wouldn't do that with a person he doesn't trust. So the fact that he put his spirit in you means he trusts you. That you will be led of his spirit. And this is a wonderful thing. So it says that we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. Now, the dilemma we get into is when we mess up and we make mistakes or we sin. The enemy comes and says, God's not going to have anything to do with you because you blew it, you messed up, and you didn't do everything right. Don't listen to those lies either because 
That's what the blood of Jesus covers is all our sins and washes them away. And every day you wake up, it's a brand new start to do it right. Forget the past, it's overrated. You might say, well, I've messed up a bunch of my past. The past is the past, it's overrated. And it's now that matters. And so each day is a new day to get it right with God. And if we don't have confidence, we won't. It's just that simple. So a lot of people say, you just got to believe in yourself. This is this is where the mistake is made. That, that's, that's a big mistake. Because if you put all your faith in yourself and your own abilities, eventually it's going to fail. And, uh, you know, so many people you see on TV when they win their awards, they give credit to themselves. They go, well, the reason I'm up here is because I just believed in myself. But see, it's the Lord's faith and his belief in us that causes us to succeed. And every time you succeed, the bell goes bing. Or it could be a cell phone. But then we go on and we look further. And I want to show you a bunch of scriptures that show how important it is for you to have confidence. It'll affect the way you walk. It'll affect the way you talk and everything you do in life. And remember, all the mistakes are under the blood of Jesus. Look at all the people in the Bible that God used that made mistakes. Sometimes their timing was off. Or sometimes they just got discouraged. But God didn't give up on them. Ezekiel is a good example. He was mightily used to God. And then he got depressed afterwards. And he said, God, just take me. I just want to die. He got depressed. And then the Lord showed up and sustained him. And gave him new strength and new energy. And he got his life back on track. So it says here in Ephesians 3.16 that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So here's the key. Going to the gym and working out is not enough. Physical strength is not enough. It says to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner person. And the Lord will make us strong on the inside so that we'll be able to handle whatever comes at us in life. And the promise of God is that he'll never give you anything that you can't handle. So if you're going through something and you think you can't handle it, all that means is that you're stronger than you think you are. And sometimes we don't think we're as strong as we are. And again, the confidence is going to come when we realize God is pouring out his strength and building us up in the spirit. And you notice in this scripture, the way it's worded, that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory, not your glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Those words are <coughs> meticulously placed there. It says, the first thing it says is, God will grant you. Now you need to think about what a grant is. A grant isn't something you deserve. You've been given favor. You know how people apply for a grant? They want to start their own business and they apply to get a, a grant from the government. And if they don't get favor, they don't get the grant. And they can't start the business. In the same way, God has granted us, not because we, you know what, I, I read my Bible every day and you know what, I pray and I do this and this, so therefore I deserve this. No. No, it's just the opposite. God grants you his strength. He grants you his favor and this power inside you in the inner person because you've been given the favor of God because he's chosen you. And Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. So the good and faithful person that's going to hear those words when they get to heaven. Well done, good and faithful person. 
well done, good and faithful servant. It's because they believed that God has faith in them and that they can do whatever God has given them to do. And this is really important because whether we really understand it or know it for sure, God's given everybody something to do. And that means that everybody's important. Really, really important. And think about sometimes the people that do the most important things of all don't always get the recognition. But this isn't about recognition. It's about being faithful. See, it's different. It's different. Not everybody's going to get a bunch of recognition. I mean, it's nice. It's nice to get recognition. But if recognition was the goal, then why did Jesus tell us whenever we do good things to do it in secret? See, we're not supposed to be after the recognition. And yet, human nature is, I want credit. I want everybody to know the good things I'm doing. I want credit. But the Lord says, no, no. Do your good things in secret that your Father may reward you openly. And so, the confidence comes from the Lord. He'll build this into us if we'll allow him to. And he will get us grounded and when you're grounded, that means you're immovable, you're solid. So let's look at the scripture for that. Ephesians 3.17 says this, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, being rooted and grounded in love. So love is the thing that keeps you together. The thing. Do you notice when most people get off track, it's because they're really angry and they want they're like this. See this fist here? Like this? Bad idea. Don't do this with your fist. You know how I, I know this? It says lift up holy hands of thankfulness to God. This is not thankfulness. As a parent, sometimes when the children didn't like what I was telling them to do, and I'm talking at a very young age, who taught them to do this? Three years old, I get this. From a three-year-old, this. Who taught them this? Nobody. This was their lower nature, right? And I saw other little children at age two and three, and they get mad, and they do this. Some people are stompers. Some people make fists. But the Lord wants to deliver us from this childish behavior. When we become adults, we shouldn't still be clenching our fists and stomping our feet. We're supposed to grow out of that. And so, then we go to the next scripture. And again, this confidence. See, if we have confidence in God, even when people are being the wrong way to us, that confidence will overrule whatever's happening to us because somebody's not treating us right. You say, well, they're not treating us right, but you know what? God sees it. And he's going to take care of this. This is going to be all right. One time, this one guy was really coming against me and... Uh, I just started laughing, and he started getting up and said, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? And the reason I was laughing is because I knew God was going to take care of him, and he did. And he says, he couldn't get me upset. He's, he was making all these threats, and I just started laughing. See, because greater is he that is in you. And so here's the scripture. It says, Philippians 1 6. This is how we know that we're supposed to have confidence. What if you're playing a song and somebody throws a tomato at you? I've had stuff thrown at me before. 
some of the dumps I've played in over the years, traveled around the world playing in these dives, you get stuff thrown at you. And you just keep on playing and keep on smiling. You know when the tomatoes are flying, the beer cans are flying. So it says, Philippians 1, 6, for I am confident of this very thing. Now, you see the sentence starts out with confidence. So it's saying, I'm confident of a thing, a certain thing. And we're going to find out what that thing is. Basically, the thing is God's going to do it. It says, I am confident of this very thing that God, who began a good work in you and in me, will complete this work until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, short version, God's going to do it. Now I want you to think about this. Sometimes the reason we lose confidence is because we've been looking too much at the character of people and not enough at the character of God. So let me show you the difference. I know many, many people over the years who start something and they don't finish it. Do you know anybody who started something and didn't finish it? I ended up with a few guitars that way. I had a friend who was going to build his own guitar and he got halfway into it. And he just lost interest and he had paid for all the parts. And one day he goes, here, you want these parts of this guitar. Here's a hunk of wood. Here's a guitar neck. And he gave them all to me and I, I took them and had another guy finish it. But my point is people often start things and don't finish them. But God is never like that. Everything God starts, he finishes. So he, he made the world, right? You know, Genesis, and he made all this stuff. And then he said, I'm done with that. That's finished. Seven days, probably was 7,000 years. Seven days, doesn't matter. You can fuss over the details. Was it really seven days or was it 7,000 years? Well, the Bible says one day is as a thousand years to the Lord. So it could have been a long time. It could have been a short time. But the point is whether it was long or short, he finished it. And Jesus did the same thing. He came here and did all his work to save all of us. And what does he say? What's the, what's the last thing he says on the cross? It is finished. Now, Paul was writing all this stuff in the New Testament. I think God used him as an example because he went through hell. He was in shipwreck, had serpents biting him. He had people betraying him. He was beaten left for dead several times but he said that he was going to finish his course in other words he knew that he was going to finish what God gave him to do he's thrown in prison too but he still finished his course no matter what happened he kept going and this is the key is whatever happens keep going just keep going and you say well how can I keep going when all this junk's happening easy God's going to finish it through the strength he's going to put in you, you will finish your course and complete your full work. So he says, I am confident of this very thing that God who began a good work in you, that's you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's the day when you, you go to see, uh, see the Lord, you know, check out of the hotel and say goodbye. But we're not to that day yet. So in the meantime, we need to walk out the rest of our life in confidence and, and I mean full confidence in er, every area of your life. We're not supposed to be down on our looks, for example, because that's a lack of confidence. I don't look very good. No, don't do that either. Because how you think about yourself is how you'll carry yourself. And if you don't think you look good, you'll walk around like a person who doesn't think they look good. I mean, all these things really matter. They're not small things. They're all good. They're all good for us. Uh, but why are people afraid to have this confidence? And I'm going to talk about it. It's just a, a simple misunderstanding. 
Before we do this, though, just to show you how important confidence is to the Lord in the Bible, that you be a confident person and your confidence is in Him, it says, don't throw away your confidence. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Notice it says, don't throw it away. Don't cut yourself down. Don't speak against yourself. Don't think badly of yourself. Now, a lot of people say, well, how can you say that? We're all sinners. Yes, we're all sinners, but our sin is under the blood of Jesus. So if you go around feeling bad about your sins you've made in the past, it's like it's an insult to God because it's like saying the blood of Jesus didn't cover it. Now, think about what I just said, because when the blood of Jesus covers it, that means it's washed away, it's wiped away as if it never happened. And the Lord even took it this far. He said, I will bury your sins in the sea of forgetfulness and I will remember your sins no more. So why are we thinking about it if God's not? When God looks at you, he's not looking at your mistakes. He's looking at who he made. He's looking at a work in progress that's gonna be finished and it's gonna be great when it's done. When it's done, it's gonna be really, really good. And if only more people just knew that this, there'd be a lot healthier people. The, these scriptures are to bring health into you uh, from the Holy Spirit. 10, Hebrews 10, 35, 36. Don't throw away your confidence. It will be rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive the reward that he has promised. It's a reward of, of faithfulness and doing what he's given you to do. And more than being afraid of, of making mistakes, if you want to fear something, I mean, not that I recommend it, but we should be more concerned that we're doing God's will and doing what he asked us to than whether we're going to make a mistake. Because if you go into it doing God's will, there will be some bumps in the road and some mistakes along the way, but you're going in the right direction because you're actually doing it. So why then do people have an aversion, aversion backing away, afraid to be confident? And I think one of the main reasons is people say, well, I don't want to come off arrogant and I don't want to come off proud. I get that. But that is actually a form of pride. In other words, being afraid that you're going to be proud is pride. Because pride is all based on you looking good, uh, you know, and, and thinking good of yourself without God. If you know that the good qualities and the strength and the power is coming from God and you're giving God the credit, you don't have to worry about what people are thinking of you and you don't even have to worry about what you think of you because you know that it's God that's making it good. And you don't have to make an issue of your mistakes either because I heard a conversation once that got my attention there were these two guys talking. I was working in a music store many years ago, and this one guy was uh, talking to the other guy, and he says, you know, I'm not perfect. And the other guy said, don't worry, I never thought you would. So see, see how ridiculous the whole thing is? This, this secret pride See, being all worried about whether you're perfect or not is pride. It's like, otherwise I can't come up here because what if, what if I don't say things accurately all the time? Did you know there's not one minister that sing, uh, excuse me, I'll talk about music too, but there's not one minister that is 100% accurate all the time in what they say, not one. I've heard them all the time on TV and they're, they're not accurate all the time. I'm not accurate all the time. Why? Because God chooses imperfection to do his perfect work. 
God works in paradoxes constantly. He says that death is swallowed up of life and imperfection brings his perfection. So God works in strange ways. He says he chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. And uh, many times I've told Kathy that sometimes I just feel like a fool. People say, how could you feel like a fool? Well, because the Bible says that God chose the foolishness of preaching to reach people. God says well, preaching is foolish. So what am I doing up here? Well, I'm doing it anyway, because it's a calling, right? But did you know that he, he says he chose the foolishness of preaching to reach people? Sounds crazy. But God works in very strange ways. And he'll usually pick unlikely people to do what he has to get done. He'll pick unlikely people. I could have been a suit and tie guy, right? With a military haircut. That suits your fancy. But whatever. My point is that if we will be happy to just be who he made us to be, and all you got to do is be you and then let God use you being you and don't be against yourself and don't be afraid to be confident because the confidence comes from the Lord and as long as we keep that focus on Jesus we will be walking on water doing stuff we couldn't normally do stuff that how, how did I do that see Peter's walking on water because he's got it he's looking at Jesus He's walking on water. He's doing the stuff he couldn't do on his own. The minute he takes his eyes off Jesus, down he goes. So our focus should stay on the Lord. And so confidence is from God. It's not arrogance. It's not pride. Confidence is a sign of a person who is rooted and grounded in love. And if you're always doing things with love as the motive, you can have full confidence even if things get messy at times. And they will, because that's part of life. Love is messy. It's very messy. But if you if you uh, stick with love, it's, it's going to keep you where you're supposed to be. And Kathy, um, I'm going to have you close out with the announcements, and, and I don't have anything going after that. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, you've got to grab something. i got a, I got a prayer request. I, my work has been really challenging.